Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to part two of our social media primer. What does it all mean? And in the first part of this lecture, we spoke a lot about some of the principles and theories and what you can do. And then the second part, we're going to speak about what we do. And so our road to social media came via the web. And I guess the web is really social media. We've done CT as Us for 15 years. We have uh, basically about 250,000 users in about 200 countries. And many of you are familiar with CT as Us. We have a new lecture every week. We have hundreds of thousands of cases and all sorts of different bits of information. There's our teaching file. You can look at the cardiac there. It says almost 13 million views. And we're constantly adding and updating, and whether it's quizzes or journal clubs or pearls or all sorts of things, it's a major content of information. Now, the thing about the site is there's nothing very funny about it. There's no jokes. There's nothing outside of pure radiology from the lectures to questions to protocols. And we thought perhaps, is there a way of connecting to our audience and connecting to potential a new audience by having a bit more than just simply static information. Now, I say static in a nice way. Obviously, we have videos and we have lectures. That's not very static. But is there something else we could do? We thought perhaps social media can help us. And so if you look at the lower left of your screen, there's our social media hookups, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we really have put a lot of effort into these things. Now, if you ask the question, how do people find our social media accounts? Most of them find it through our website. Others find it through Google or different searches. But there are many different ways of finding you, but this may be the, uh, the most classic of ways. Now, when we looked at doing Facebook, we tried to figure out what is it that we could do. We didn't want it just to be CT as us, because then why bother? So we said, why don't we do something that's more than CT as us and combines educational pure radiology, whether it's pearls, quizzes, facts, images, with other information. We were not going to be controversial about information, and so we're not picking sides in the election. If we speak about the election, we only show what SNL had to say, so it's somewhat humorous. But we try to also say what information can we provide to people that they would find our Facebook page as a place they want to go to and so get information many different ways. And here's just screenshots I shot of the day I was giving the talk. And you can see here's our site. You can see up on top it talks about all of our apps on the App Store, which are for free. Thank you. And then it shows an advertisement one of our courses, May 12 to 15, which will have occurred by the time you heard this lecture. Nevertheless, we run great courses, so we do a little bit of advertisement on the Facebook page for that. And then we talk about things. So what things do we talk about? Here's just one screenshot when Blumberg and Kimmel put up $50 million each to form a new cancer research, for immunology at Hopkins, or the management tip of the day from the Harvard Business Review. Those are two things we put up, but what's our strategy? Well, here's the strategy. Every day there's a case of the day. Most of the time it's an audio case of the day. Here was just a simple serious that of the pancreas. Six images. Often we have a video with a quiz. But there's a case of the day first thing in the morning. There's then a pearl of the day. An interesting fact. This one speaks about renal cell carcinoma. You can see on this day the uh, case of the day, which was about a day old, 17 hours. They already had 10,000 plus people looking at it. Sometimes we put up factoids. So here was some information about looking at the aortic arch and its development from one of the articles we published. And you can see we reposted that material for people to read. Then we post information of interest. And when I say interest, it's not always going to be of interest to everyone, but things that are important in the scheme of medicine. So the Blumberg thing is important because people are putting their money where their mouth is to help find the cure for cancer. And Biden was there. It's this home moonshot. And the management tip of the day, we put that every day. Harvard Business Review publishes it. It's a very interesting short 30-second read, but can be very important. At times, I post things the way I describe them. They're kind of random because I don't know what I'm going to post when I start the day. It's things I read, things that I see, people send me things. 
things that I think we should post. So here's an example of the pelvic lymph node anatomy. And also there's a talk from Ted on genome that we thought was good. And then we post popular culture because everybody cares about what's going on in the world. And certain things to me became important, like Julie Dreyfus is going to host Saturday Night Live. Does that mean Seinfeld's going to show up? Does the, I guarantee Larry David's going to show up. I don't really care about Russell Crowe, to be honest. But look at that. Within a few hours, 15,000 plus people. And the day before I was reading, it was Eric Clapton's birthday. I saw him a year ago in London when he was 70. Now he's 71. And we have a video of Eric Clapton. So we put up a lot of music on the site. We put up things that I happen to like. We put up a song of the week. Um, music will vary from Eric Clapton to Bread to Taylor Swift, on and on and on. We put up last week a song with Led Zeppelin. Uh, and then the same song is sung with lead singer Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin with someone else. Okay, so we put up things that I think people would enjoy. And I think people are enjoying things. Here's just one screenshot day before. Over 1.1 million users, and sometimes it reaches 2 million users over a 28-day period. And you could see on an average day, we have 200 to 400,000 users. And what's interesting is when you think you know where the people are coming from, you really don't. Only 25% of our users are U.S. 75% are non-U.S. Look at those names, top countries. U.S., number one. Then India, Pakistan, Egypt, Brazil, Mexico, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Philippines, Bangladesh. Look at the top cities, Cairo, Dhaka, Karachi, Lahore, Mexico City, Baghdad, Riyadh, Kabul, Phnom Penh, New Delhi. Half the time you don't know where those cities are, unless you've been studying your geography. And it's amazing, when I, you, this is a small slide or a small print, but look at all the names of the top 30 places. It takes you about 30 to reach a U.S. city. So one thing you realize is the information that you provide is going globally. So it's an opportunity to really teach the world. People give talks at meetings and talk about how they have a website that gets 100 people. Or they give a lecture that people listen in from Africa. 10 people from Africa listen. Oh, incredible. We have a million people listening in. And if you look at that chart... 26% U.S., India, 36% other countries, but Egypt, Brazil. So we are really helping a lot of people around the world. And if you look at individual posts, this is the best from a month period. A CTA runoff study in 3D reached 377,000 people. Look at the number of views we get for things. Again, the numbers are incredible. Then you say perhaps in order to do this you need a lot of money. Well, we don't have a lot of money. And when we started, we had small numbers. So one way of looking at Facebook is the number of likes. Though it's not the best measure because the longer you've been around, once you get a like, it's hard to lose it. We started with 1,000, the ACR and RSNA. We're at 50,000. Now look at the numbers from the other day. We're at 83.7 and ACR is 72.4. We've lapped them. And we keep growing. Look at our engagements. Now, if you want to be humble, which of course we are, look up Taylor Swift. She's at 73 million. So then you're just a rounding error. But in the field of medicine, we're pretty, pretty good in terms of our numbers. And that's only one measure. But we keep increasing and we try. And look at our engagements. It's almost the same as the entire Hopkins site. Now, when we look at things, we actually wrote an article that was just published looking at Facebook as a media for medical information. And we speak about the value of Facebook as a way of people being accustomed to getting information. And so we're pushing information to them. One of the reasons Facebook is successful compared to Twitter is because the information is coming to you. So it allows us to reach people with both the classic cases and lectures and information, as well as additional information. And it's been very, very successful, not only by us, but by many other sites as well. And you really can provide significant information to people. Now, Twitter is something we have not yet mastered, I don't think. I, I don't understand Twitter quite the same. I use it a bit. Everything we post on CT is Us is retweeted, so you can see here it is. And we have a couple thousand followers. Uh, the number is okay. Here's almost 84,000 tweets in a 
one month period. So we're getting better. Um, we spent some time initially just recreating tweets directly for Twitter, but it wasn't that successful and it was just taking too much time. But we do use it. We use YouTube. That's where our lectures and our videos are stored. We have over 3,000 lectures and videos, and yes, we are trying to reorganize it to make it easier to reach. We also store our stuff in the Apple Cloud, right? So you go to the Apple Store, you can download any of our videos. And it's a little bit better organized in that, in that zone. But again, YouTube becomes a very strong way of taking videos and sound and files and putting them online for people to look at. And that's just a copy of our site with a lot of bits of information in place. Now, one of the great things about YouTube, it's cross-platform. It's a key division of Google, so you know it's only going to get better, and it's going nowhere. Now, I mentioned before about an education. One thought is, moving it a bit to the side, can you use social media to recruit patients with rare diseases? interesting question. This article by Shoemaker makes the point. They looked at patients with Fontaine-associated protein-losing enteropathy and plastic bronchitis. They had a hard time recruiting anybody. Well, then when they went online, they had a lot of respondents, and the patients they had that were good for the study, the majority of them, 84%, came from social media. So you see, people look at social media, particularly people with diseases, they're trying to figure out what's happening, what's new, and what's changing. So if you go look for them and say, well, we want to follow up, we want to help you, we want to do a study, you can recruit patients. And you think about it, it's not a surprise, right? People are online. So if you want to build up your practice or help patients, screening studies, virtual colonoscopy, low-dose lung cancer, mammography, you can put that on your website, write about it, tell people why they need it say if they're the right person that does need it. We can help radiology by talk about and use image gently and image wisely. Make certain people know, make sure people know we're on top of things. And this whole idea about information is not just us, the government, the uh, World Health Organization, CDC. When they want to get information out there, they're using social media. Look at this Zika virus with the mosquitoes. It would have taken months to years to tell people about it. It's online. Within days, everyone knows exactly where to go and where not to go. It can be incredibly powerful. Now, it's interesting. Sometimes the web has things that you don't know exist that can affect you. Good article by Rosencrantz and his team about Yelp. Yelp is, some of you may have heard of it. People usually rate restaurants on Yelp. Well, they have good hot dogs. The hamburgers suck. The, the, the pizza's good, but the soda was flat. You know, a lot of positive and negatives. But they did. They looked at Yelp and said, could we look at patients' feelings toward imaging centers? And they found a whole bunch of imaging centers on Yelp, and they looked at the comments about radiologists or the service. And they concluded the patients' perceptions of imaging centers was shaped by the service quality. So something that we knew we've written about in JACR or Schultes has made the comment that the little things matter a lot. The radiologist reading the films is a small part of the puzzle. Nasty or nice front desk people, easy parking, an organized process goes a long way to making people happy. It's not just reading the scans. Now I'm at Hopkins. We're number one in the world. Or some of you guys now we finished too. But I said, okay, let me see what Yelp is doing. And I look, we're only three stars on Yelp. How's that possible? You read the things, five-star review, top-notch hospital, and this one is five-star. Okay, kudos to all. Or this one, five stars. Fred Eckhauser was incredible. Well, if you know Fred, Ed ha Fred Eckhauser, who just retired, he is incredible, an incredible surgeon. Okay, but that's fives, but how do we get three? Well, if you average it out, if you have fives and your average is three, you got ones. Hopkins is great if you're desperate. Ugh, not very good. I have never spoken with more people, been transferred from line to line, and waited longer on hold to get a doctor's appointment. Not very good. So again, we need to be able to look at the social media, figure out if the complaints are valid, and make certain we take care of those complaints. And I tell you, those complaints probably were valid. Now, you could say, well, social media is still evolving. It will continue to evolve. You can wait, but there is a tremendous advantages to the first mover. 
And believe me, you're no longer the first mover. So it's better to be early than to be late. People are developing trusted sites, and if you wait too long, you're going to be carved out. And the truth is, whatever you build today will have to change tomorrow. We keep changing everything. That's just the law of the land. Everything will continue to change. C comment by um, Carolina in this article. Social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Blogger, Naver, Reddit, is a potential platform where physicians can expand research, promote health awareness, facilitate patient education, and the like. Because social media becomes integrated into the lives of the millennial generation, medical education materials need to be adapted to reach this new generation who are using it for information distribution and interaction. And that's very important. The people who are our patients or the children of our patients or the people we're hiring really expect things to be done differently. They favor more technologically oriented teaching methods and web-based delivery and educational materials will only grow as we move forward. The information provided in this article could be valuable to medical educators and those who are in the process of or are considering developing an educational Facebook page. So it's a really good article. It's well worth reading. I think the average age, if you took the first two users, the first three authors is actually less than the last two authors if you combine them all up together. So, challenges. Doing a website is painful. Let's be honest, it's 24-7, 365. Content is king. You need content. You need to keep adding and providing new content. Someone needs to take responsibility of doing it. There are financial costs which are real. And revenue may be a challenge in this world of free content. But you have to figure out, is it part of your mission? And if it's part of your core mission, you need to do it. So that becomes very, very important. Now, as we said in this one other article, 85% of physicians use smartphones, 53% use tablets in their practice areas. So there are so many opportunities. One thing this article by Kim does make the point that if you're going to do it, do it right, because many people find dissatisfaction from many of the apps they do. If you're going to do a website, if you're going to do a mobile device, uh, if you're going to do apps, it better be good. Okay. If you have a Facebook page and a Twitter page and you're sending one thing out a week, it ain't going to work. It needs to be this constant flow of information, and ideally it needs to be in two directions, but people really want you to reach out to them. So I think it's very exciting. What can go wrong? Well, you need to know your institutional policies. It does take a lot of time, and there's no reimbursement for many of us. There's a questionable academic reward. It's not peer-reviewed. That could be a challenge, though perhaps in the future people will better understand its education value. And again, you may need to have a long-term strategy because there are costs involved. Again, going back to Zember's article, it's important to be careful what you post and what you say. Inappropriate online behavior can potentially damage your personal integrity, the doctor-patient relationship, a doctor-colleague relationship, or even opportunities for future employment. It becomes very, very important. This article by Mansville makes the point that there are issues with confidentiality, but it's still this, the force of where things are going I gave you a quote in the beginning. Let me give you a quote in the last slide. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. The second line is the line that matters. Not all those who wander are lost. So hopefully with that, you'll be thinking about what you're doing, what you can do. And you may be wrong when you start off, but it's worth the trip. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Bye.